Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and the first step on our epic quest to the most Kerbal spacecraft ever is making the Kerbal aircraft. Yes, so what we've done is we've basically attached some procedural wings, some big jet engines and some tail fins to this thing, and it's crawling down the runway with all the swiftness of a glacier, nay, continental drift. The good news is that while it will barely challenge a snail to a race, it is managed to slide down the runway without destroying everything underneath it. While we are interested in getting this thing into the air, it would be a shame if we destroyed the landing strip where it would have to return. I mean, in the rocketry business, we are used to disposable launch vehicles. We are, however, not used to disposable launch sites. This is, of course, Kerbal Space Program, and standards are understandably different. Anyway, four of those engines generating about a thousand kilonewtons of thrust have pushed us up to almost 50 meters per second. 50 meters per second, and we're having some... Uh, well, it's starting to skew off to one side of the runway, so let's turn it back. And now it's not responding and wanting to turn the other way, and the edge of the runway is coming up, and... I've just noticed that I didn't even put the wings on straight. But, uh, it doesn't matter because we've just lost those strings. Well, so much for that. <laughs> Look at it. Bouncing there, heading for the ocean. Uh, at least it made it to the ocean in one piece and now actually floats. So let's adapt an old Kerbal technique known as more boosters and put more jet engines on, because jet engines are a bit like boosters. Waiting for the sun to rise in dramatic fashion and throttle up. The wings are struggling under the weight of those booster uh, uh, jets, sorry, and in fact they appear to be suffering under the stress, the thrust that those engines are putting on it. Thanks to the amazing joint strength in Kerbal Space Program and the huge amount of thrust, we have created a variable geometry, forward swept wing, well, flying submarine, it's not really flying just yet, but hopefully, hopefully those will uh, help it fly by pushing the centre of mass forward or the centre of lift forward. And I don't know, let's see what happens. Speed is building, anticipation is building, we're up above 50 metres per second already. Halfway down the runway, surely this will bring us to the skies like we planned. We are moving off the side of the runway, and it's not coming back no matter how hard I push it. Oh dear, don't crash. Oh, there we go, it's crashed, and we lost both of these. Well, so much for that. And we're rolling. Only in Kerbal Space Program can you suffer a rollover accident in a submarine that you are trying to fly from a runway. So I added some struts to reinforce the wings. That clearly didn't work very well. Clearly those struts were supplied by Kraken Industries. At first I thought the failure was because I hadn't installed them according to the manufacturer's uh, recommendations, so everything was unplugged, uh, all the struts were reinstalled above and below, and the vessel was tried out on the runway. And was half successful. Sensing that the wings might never be up to the task, I moved all of the engines onto the fuselage and added a few for good measure. I mean, after all, the more struts routine seems to be failing, so let's go with the more engines. Pushing our vehicle down the runway at a whole 40 meters per second before one of the wings decides that it would prefer to just sit this whole launch thing out. I'm not sure why, but Jebediah decided to go for it anyway and see how fast this thing could actually go. Until it disintegrated. Don't worry, he'll be back. And in greater numbers. Some modifications were made to the wings, adding a small amount of dihedral to the wings to improve stability of the vehicle. Unfortunately, this had no effect on the structural integrity of the vehicle. So I began to think that perhaps those procedural wings were just not up to the task of lifting a submarine. So I switched back to the good old-fashioned aircraft wings from the default builds. Um, yeah, I needed quite a few of them, and I decided to double these things up. As stupidly as they look, they did actually start to seem like they might lift this thing up a little. They didn't break off. 
at least until I started to pitch up too much and then everything just went to heck. So once again I followed the mantra of more struts, also added some more wings because, well, it's a flying submarine so making it a flying submarine biplane wouldn't be any crazier. Uh, it's now a one-winged submarine biplane. If, if you have biplane loses the wings on one side, does it become a monoplane again? Yeah, whatever. This thing ends up sliding towards the ocean like a giant shark. Or maybe it's like a beached whale or something holding its fin high in the air saying, Help me! And exploding. You know, it turns out that I hadn't had Kerbal Joint reinforcement installed, so installing that and coming back produced a bit more of a robust vehicle. And after a bit of a bounce, I got airborne! And discovered that my centre of lift was in fact in front of my centre of mass. But I landed in the ocean and was very quickly sticking one arm up in the air saying, It's okay! I got it! I got it! I got it! I know what to do! I'm gonna fix it! And fix it I did! Adding some more tailplanes, moving the centre of mass backwards, giving myself some more control authority, and this time... I didn't manage to do it. But everything should be working! Once again, coming off the end of the runway, pulling back on the stick as hard as possible, and... No response! In fact, it seems to be pitching downwards. Oh, wait a second, you know why that is? It's because the nav ball was upside down in all those previous launches. I added a probe at the front, and finally, pitching back, started it pitching back for a mere moment before it crashed into the ground. Okay, I need more wings, and less mass. I mean, I don't really need all that fuel anyway, do I? And more wings, less mass, and a pitch up! We go up! We're going up! Now, can we go down? Pitching down? Pitching down is not working. Okay, let's uh, pitch up. Let's see if we can pull through a loop. Come on! Go faster! Faster, 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 faster! And uh, no, we've stalled it. We've terribly stalled it. I mean, we stalled it well before this, but now we've really stalled it. Now we're going backwards. Can we collide with the water at such a speed that the submarine survives? Only Jebediah will know. Oh no, he's turning sideways. And impact. He survived because he is Jebediah and because that submarine appears to be made of unobtainium. Okay, once again, we need more control authority. So let's start adding fins all over the joint. Or rather, a whole lot of fins to the tail. Let's add some flaps on the wings so that we can have some roll in this thing. And we've added plenty of wings to be sure, but we hadn't been adding control surfaces because uh, they were complicated and, you know, we never knew what they might do. But one more attempt. Will this be the one? Well, we'll find out. We have a dozen of the largest jet engines in the game. We have more wing surface than I can count. We have tailplanes just stuck all over our butt. And we have a very bold pilot who does not know the meaning of the word fear. He also doesn't know that submarines aren't supposed to fly, which is actually pretty convenient right now because otherwise most pilots wouldn't have taken this. He adjusts his navigational instrument, correcting the implicit bias of his navigation system. And now rolling down the runway, almost hitting 100 meters per second thanks to the power of all those engines. Now we can start to consider pulling back as we run off the end at 125 and we are airborne. The flying submarine, the flying Red October. You see, Red October, of course, the hunt for Red October was all about a Russian submarine that was so quiet that no one could hear it. But you know what? If you could make a submarine fly, then nobody would believe it. Well, you can imagine the scene at NORAD as they see a submarine flying on their radar system and they'll say, that must be a glitch, that can't be a real thing. Anyway, it's a submarine, so we should try and perform one of those crazy Ivans. At least if you perform a crazy Ivan while flying, I guess that's called a crazy Jebediah. Perhaps the word crazy is a little redundant at this point. 
I mean, you can understand this turn was a rather slow and laborious affair, but we were able to turn around and line up our sights for approach on the space center. I mean, it's surprisingly easy to convince the control tower that you deserve a fly past. After all, you have nuclear weapons on your side. Nobody wants to tell the person with nuclear weapons that they can't fly in the space that they want to. But here we go, we're going to try and split the difference between the control tower and the vehicle assembly building flying at low altitude. Ha! Look at the maneuverability of that thing, like threading a needle or an undersea canyon with all the skills of Marco Remius. We've also built up quite a bit of speed by this point, 240 meters per second, so let's try picking up some altitude. Perhaps we can get above this cloud layer and uh, maybe use our sensors a little better. We uh, pick up enough altitude, we can't quite get above the clouds, but we do show that we can get over these nearby mountains in a beautiful demonstration of our airmanship. Find a low point in the mountains. Uh, it's almost 5 kilometers up here, uh, 4.9 kilometers altitude. The altitude at the top, incidentally, is uh, the surface altitude rather than the sea level altitude, thanks to a wonderful little mod. Finally, can we land this thing? We have, we're gonna try landing it. Nowhere near the runway, because the runway probably would explode. We're going to test it on something uh, a little less explosive, because if we manage to explode the grasslands of Kerbin, uh, then that would be a pretty major environmental disaster. So uh, we hope they're up for the task. Please don't explode. Oh, no, there we go. No, oh, yes, no. Yeah, this is obviously all filmed at four times regular speed, because this... <laughs> This took far too long. It has all the agility of an oil tanker being pushed around by three-toed sloths. Which aren't really known for their horsepower, to be honest. But there you have it. Part one of my epic quest for the most Kerbal vehicle ever. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.